Hey guys, so today I thought I'd show you um, how I'm going to make this um, small interface to play all my uh, my JAMA uh, arcade stuff um, on the uh, standard monitor. So ideally I'd like to be able to test the boards here and, and try and fix them here in my in my on my desk uh, in my office, well office recording studio, whatever it is. Um, but to do that, I need to be able first to uh, to power them. I need to be able to connect them to controllers and and do all the stuff I can normally do inside the uh, the cabinet. So what you need for that is called a, a super gun or a, a jammer gun or it's got different names. But what this is, this is essentially just a, a connector interface. There's actually not a lot of stuff going on here. Um, it just uses the uh, the standard connector and just patches it, that through. Um, you know, it connects the the power stuff. So you got your your five volt, your ground. I'm gonna try and focus. Yeah, ground plus five minus five plus twelve. You got um, stuff to um, here for the RGB signal just to um, to correct the green, uh, red and blue. Uh, you got your SCART um, interface to plug that in directly into a, a standard monitor. Uh, I'm gonna try and use this uh, Philips here. Uh, you have this the VG or VS80. Uh, and then it it actually connects all the uh, all the stuff you normally find in the cabinet. So you got the coin up, you got this test and service switch. Um, actually, I don't know what these guys are, and uh, it just has this chip that helps you uh, connect that to a, a standard controller type. So uh, in this case, I'm going to use uh, another connector to connect these into a, a PS a PlayStation PlayStation Two. A controller and you got your reset switch so it's actually not a lot of stuff it's just mostly uh, uh, mostly transistors and and buttons just connecting everything uh, the cool thing about this one is you can actually use uh, the the JAMA standard or the MSV standard which is the um, the um, uh, SNK uh, games uh, cards so what we're gonna do first is uh, we're gonna find a nice piece of wood board to fix this on and to power this, we're going to use the switching, uh, the switching uh, power supply. This is actually a cheap Chinese one. It'll do just fine for for the purpose of testing. Um, if you were to um, to uh, use one of these in an arcade, you'd probably get a better quality one. Uh, although I'm not sure how much better quality it is, but uh, this feels much sturdier and better. But anyway, uh, these will do just fine. And uh, the, what these do is uh, you just connect your, your power supply uh, coming from one of these uh, into here. And this provides minus 5 plus 5 your 12 volt and ground. So we're going to connect all this here uh, and uh, we'll, be, we'll be ready to go. And this piece of wood, um, I don't know, it was from a, uh, some sort of tray thing, whatever it was. Um, but it's actually fine, fine. Uh, marine plywood type of wood and um, this stuff is actually uh, very very good for uh, for this type of project so um, we're gonna use this what I'm gonna do is um, I'm probably gonna trim this first here and here and then um, I'm gonna have the JAMA um, gun the power uh, sorry the power um, here and probably I need the uh, the JAMA board here because the other boards are going to connect it here. I'm going to put this slightly on a on a height. Uh, how am I going to do this actually? Because um, yeah, I'm just going to put this slightly elevated. Well, no, that's not going to work because some boards would be flush, some will actually be up and down, and it's, it's just going to be get messy, very messy. So um, I'll have to think about that. Maybe. Uh, um, being able to bring this up and down or you know what just cut this here just cut this flush um, I don't need the entire surface which means I could probably do the same thing here and keep the, uh, the bigger um, yeah might just do that uh, I need I need this uh, guy uh, forward um, actually probably a bit more because some do, some boards have edges um, if it's too much of a problem I cut this here uh, and that's really all I need. It's going to be nice and tidy. Uh, I need that space here for the connectors. So yeah, perfect. Uh, yeah, I will probably need to do a small edge like that. Uh, this is holes here, which is perfect. Uh, I'm going to be able to uh, put elevated like that. But here, there's nothing. 
So I might just cut a small strip, um, yeah, and put it here. And glue, glue it right under. Um, so this will be slightly elevated, and yeah, it will be good. Sorry. So something like that. Uh, it's going to be a very easy, simple project. It doesn't need to be uh, fancy. I'm just going to trim this. Um, just look nicer. Okay. So And then so this is going to come here, somewhere here. Uh, this has to go forward a tiny bit, which means, yeah, it can probably cut somewhere here. can't use any uh, square angle because this is uh, slightly angled so I'm just gonna measure it I can't read here okay seven one quarter inches so uh, is there any markers I love this guy I actually found this guy in um, in America in the last trip uh, to America and it was at a flea market in Cape Cod. Uh, this guy was selling a lot of his tools uh, and these were all tools that he used himself. Uh, he was in his 80s, very very nice man. I chatted to him for ages and he was really really uh, really really uh, happy that was, uh, I was interested in all, all his tools and so uh, I think he wanted 20 and I said you know, can you do, I don't know, 17, just for the sake of arguing, <laughs> I, don't, I felt bad, but, um, and he, he looked at me and he said, I'll do it for 15, and I went, you know what, I'll buy it for 20, because he was, I don't know, he was so nice, and I felt bad about going down, and uh, him going even further down, than me, which was really nice, so I need to focus here, um, so, yeah, I paid 20 for it, but just the history of it, and, uh, and the fact that I knew who it belonged to, and uh, yeah, what what sort of work he did with it. Um, there you go. We're gonna cut here and here. Any sort of cut you want to make sure you're um, clamped properly you don't need big clamps that's all I have big clamps but actually can you see here oh you can't um, these are really cool because uh, they're adjustable so you release here um, and you use this just to, uh, to tighten Use this trip as well. Put that on the edge like that. Okay, so we're gonna just clean the edges here a bit. Um, there's different ways. I use this guy, a rasp, big rasp. This, so um, I'm using a, a flat piece of wood that's longer than the piece of paper because uh, if I didn't and I put pressure in one spot, I'd probably end up with uh, holes and grooves. But by using this, 
I apply even pressure everywhere, so I'm just making sure that I get a flat sand. And the reason it's it's bigger than the piece of uh, of uh, of uh, of uh, paper is so because uh, if if it came here, I ended up digging a hole here. Uh, it wouldn't be you know big and major. You can probably correct that, but it's just a lot easier to make sure that you have a straight sand from the beginning. I'm just gonna need piece of wood here at this length My uh, wires come here. So, I want this guy on the edge, right on the edge. So, um, I've actually just placed a few markers here um, just to indicate where I'm going to put my pilot holes. Okay, I have the holes for these drilled. Um, didn't want to drill the bigger holes to um, pass the zip ties, but I need to figure out what zip ties I have. No, they're here. No, they're not here. This is where I cleaned this uh, this shed a few weeks back, and already. So I'm going to use these guys. anything smaller than that. I have a funny habit of saving a lot of uh, screws and bits and um, is this a bit smaller? Yeah, it's not going to punch through though, is it? Doubt it. I have a yeah, habit of saving all these uh, bits and screws, but it's always handy you get Especially like me if you're always looking for um, for screws. Um, I try these on the smaller. Now one thing I need to do, which I just realized now, so could I actually drill the hole and recess in these? I probably should have, because these uh, these heads are most likely gonna make contact with some elements on the board. Uh, that's okay though, I am going to, uh, I'm just gonna cover them with some insulation tape. Uh, it won't be visible. Um, Try to make this quick to be honest. Um, if I had enough time, I'd probably make a, a proper one. Uh, the edge isn't properly aligned here. I'm just gonna have to, um, to uh, well, does it bother me? Doesn't really bother me, but uh, would be nice. The purpose of this is just to have everything in one place and have it in a neat and tidy in. And uh, the idea is that I can leave everything connected and I don't have to fiddle with, uh, with wires and connections every time. So, I have this existing uh, switching supply board so I'm gonna disconnect everything and use the uh, stuff from here it's already a uh, I already crimpled everything we're actually 
actually gonna connect this guy to this guy first. Okay, so all we need here really uh, for now do we I could connect the minus five as well. Um, I just connected the plus five the last time. But, uh, minus five typically is is not used on most boards. I think I could be wrong about that. Um, in fact, I could be wrong about a lot of things. But minus five <coughs> is often used for um, controllers, custom controllers uh, on the board, like speakers and things like that. Um, so yellow is twelve, but we're still gonna try and. Uh, We'll get a minus five. I'm gonna use a different color for minus five. So wires come in a lot of colors um, over the years, and some of the um, traditionally this would have been uh, live neutral, and yellow could have been ground. Could be the other color typically would have been ground, uh, and it's changed now to brown. Actually, you can see it here. It's changed to uh, to uh, brown, blue, and that's kind of yellow and green um, sort of cable. Um, and and uh, brown is is your red, uh, blue is your neutral, and this is your ground. Uh, so it is live, neutral, and ground. Um, and old houses like this house. Uh, still has wiring like that. Ideally, you'd like to change that if you come across that because that means it's old and uh, Sorry, I'm having a coffee and uh, Is is more likely to um, To break and fall apart um, So and uh, we have five we have our ground uh, Plus 12 and minus five is here. So we're just going to connect this now typically you want to uh, crimple these um, and I already did so these will have to be thrown I can't reuse these and I don't think I have any more I should probably have bought more before I started this but I didn't so I'm just gonna strip the wire wind it round I have a few here but they're actually the wrong size uh, wind it round and then uh, it'll have to do but I, I want another length of wire for the minus five. I have something here. I'm going to use this gray. Ah! Ah! It fell here somewhere, but something tells me I'm not going to find it that easily because messy workshop uh, and I could spend hours looking for it uh, forget this I'm gonna find a replacement for it well, this would be good but it's just the head is huge And it's on the ground yeah the head won't fit here although I suppose what I could do is actually use my grinder here use this grinder here just to uh, to reduce the size of the head always uh, simple jobs that end up being the most uh, time consuming because everything should be going uh, smooth and easy there you go and I'm just gonna use my file here and uh, yeah, the head now fits here. So I'm gonna cut this to size.
half an hour for one miserable little um, screw. There you go. Okay. Back on track. So next, what I'm going to do is just to prevent all this stuff from moving too much. I'm already going to... Yeah. I'm going to pass all my zip ties in first. I'm going to strip the, uh, so there's different ways to uh, strip, but I would definitely recommend you get yourselves one of these guys. There's different ways to uh, strip the wires. This is the old fashioned cutter knife. Um, it's very messy. Uh, chances are you're going to cut, especially if, if this is not single strand wire, but multi uh, strand wire like this. As you can see, this take a while. Can get messy, you can cut yourself. Uh, it's this type of guy, so you have to know the uh, size wire you're using. And there you go. But this uses a uh, strength. Uh, you can actually pull your wire, you can break it easily. This guy just makes it so much easier. You just bring your, uh, your wire here and so you'll find a lot of these uh, hooks sort of oh, do not fall on the ground. These are pricey enough, they're uh, 70, uh, 70 euros, something like that. But they're so handy, they save you a ton of time and just hassle messing with, uh, with wires. And the last one is our. What have I done? Completely messed this one up. Um, this guy goes to five. This is ground. Uh, let's double check that everything. Yeah, this is. So we're actually very much, uh, very much done here. There's one thing I just want to check, uh, and it's the uh, the five uh, five volts. So here it comes with this little uh, knob here that regulates the five, the plus five volt. So I wanna make sure that it's actually just bang on five before I plug anything else in it. So let's power this guy, see what happens. Okay. So five is here, ground is here. Okay, so we have, I don't know if you guys can see, 4.1. Um, I'm gonna try and get that bang on five. So if I go on, well, you can see the voltage decreases. There you go, I'm just gonna test the 12. I have uh, my board, actually I'm gonna disconnect this. I have uh, my board set up. Um, this is the joystick adapter, and this is an adapter for a PS2, PS1 controller. Um, uh, this is my SCART. There you go. Um, the great thing about these is you can just get adapters for like Mega Drive controllers and any type of controller you want really. But <clears throat> what's great about the PS2 is all the uh, all the buttons and the analog stuff. Uh, so and this is R Type 2. Uh, this is a JAMA uh, conversion, uh, which is a fancy word for bootleg essentially. But um, because this is JAMA, this connects pretty much a uh, plug and play um and this is the advantage of jamma so we're gonna yeah put this here i'm gonna connect my board there you go and uh, all i need to do is connect my controller and we'll see if this works and it seems to so far so good now this is the boot sequence and typically boards will actually just check themselves if the, the, the RAMs and ROMs are good and some of the ICs sometimes and 
just loads of different checks and whoa <laughs> this is awesome so there's still a couple of things I can do is probably put a few um zip ties hold on I'm gonna just turn this down probably could uh, put a zip tie here to have this permanent uh, and screw this in place and maybe sorry zip tie here uh, and maybe because this is uh, gonna get loose maybe just put another one to keep this in place here something like that yeah that might not be a bad idea um, it just prevent loose connection from forming and then um, let me think maybe in a power switch so take this the uh, this wire out and connect that to a switch and back into here um, yeah so I'll do that actually the things I need to do here, um, I'm going to take the, the, the uh, brown wire which is live um, and connect that to a, a switch, this switch here. Uh, this is a 220 volt uh, rated switch, so it'll do for uh, mains. Um, and I'm going to put it here, uh, kind of stand like that. Um, and the way this connects, uh, this connects normally you drill a hole to a piece of wood, uh, drive it through, and then yeah, this might be too big actually. It'll be alright, I'm gonna try this. I'm gonna use this piece of wood, uh, put it here, and then dry, uh, dig a, a hole through that and pass this through. Uh, but I just need to first uh, uh, tidy it a bit. My phone uh, died in the middle of, uh, of uh, working, but uh, essentially you can see the uh, finished. I just put some masking tape here just to um, um, make sure I don't touch the uh, connectors here because this is sending um, uh, 220 into the switch and back into the power supply. So essentially this switch is on the whole um, assembly here. Uh, I just put some zip ties to tie everything together. I actually decided to put um, more or less permanent uh, SCART connector on this as well and here we have our joystick connection so it's all actually just almost tidy um, setup uh, and I just have two cables coming out uh, of this which is the SCART and the power and then I can tidy them when I don't use them but uh, the switch just does exactly its job it switches things on and there you go so um, this is JAMA standard um, obviously, not every board has a jammer. Uh, in these cases, this is an Arkanoid uh, board. Uh, this is a bootleg, actually, Arkanoid board, the uh, original ones. I have a few of these, and they're, um, they have that kind of grey, silvery sort of uh, board on them. That's how you recognize them. So this is a bootleg one, and this is non jammer So the power is actually separated from the uh, the connector. I think this is what a 24 could be wrong a pin connector. So what you do is you just make a small uh, adapter. Uh, so this goes into a, a standard jammer uh, connector. So it'll go into into this uh, this uh, blue guy, and uh, you'll be able to play that. So actually, I'll I'll show you. We'll uh, we'll switch this off. I'm gonna try and do everything here with one hand. Maybe tricky. Gonna put this away and plug in. I can hide. So they have a side, uh, up and down, part side and solder side. Um, 
it's actually hard to do in one hand, but I'm going to do my best here. I might have to put my phone down for a second. There, we go. there you go. So it's uh, it's going to allow me to test stuff properly. So let's switch this on. And there you go. Arkanoid is a, obviously a vertical um, game. And it's all working. Uh, unfortunately, I can't test. You need a spinner for Arkanoid. So uh, these these controllers won't work. I'll show you now. I'm just going to maybe select uh, one player. Yeah. There's different ways to recognize, see this isn't exactly uh, working. Uh, in fact this might be a problem with the board itself because I couldn't get this board to play properly with my with my actual... Uh, <clears throat> so this is working. Yeah, I couldn't get the board to play properly with my uh, existing spinner. Um, never mind, maybe I'll, I'll get it to fix. But this, uh, this setup will allow me uh, to fix it so there you go hope you enjoyed that and uh, see you next time